I'm Kelsey Zeiser with Light Reading for Orb TV, and we're here at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, and I'm joined by Adrian Scrace with Etsy. Good to see you. Thank you, Kelsey. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at Etsy. Uh, I'm Chief Technical Officer at Etsy. My responsibility there is to oversee the operational side of the production of all standards within the Institute. Okay. And uh, what are Etsy's efforts to support industry momentum around edge computing? Uh, edge computing is a, a matter of real importance to Etsy. Uh, we were the first standards body to embark on a standardization uh, effort for what was then called mobile edge computing. We now call it multi-access edge computing. We realized some years ago that it was important with um, high performance that we reduce the amount of distance that data has to travel. So if you have uh, very uh, data rich applications you want to then reduce the amount of travel that that data is required to, to, to undertake before it is processed. So the, the whole concept then is to push the computational power to the edge of the network. And in recent years we realized that this is critical for some of the emerging applications and we set about a standardization activity to try and first of all prove that concept, that it, that it was viable as a, as a concept, and then to start standardizing the use of that concept. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, and how will edge computing support 5G use cases and that require that computing at the edge of the network? I think it's important to stress that Edge is not, um, MEC is not just uh, a 5G technology, it's valid for any uh, access mechanism. And this is why we actually changed the, the name to mobile, uh, to multi-access edge okay. computing because it isn't just specific to 5G, it's equally valid in 4G and predecessor networks. But uh, as you look towards the sort of 5G use cases where we're looking at very low latency, very high performance, very bespoke use cases. I mean, they are obviously where you would need such such an approach, where you have this computational power at the edge of the network. So, to some extent, uh, when a while uh, MEC is very usable in 3G and 4G networks, it sort of comes into its own in a 5G environment when we start to look at very high performance, very low latency application. Okay. And looking at virtualization, how are Etsy's efforts around plug tests and hackathons playing a role in uh, development of SDN and NFE? Well, if we talk about uh, plug tests in general, I mean, plug tests uh, is a, a, a very useful tool that we've uh, utilized in Etsy for many, many years now for, for many technologies that we've developed. The whole purpose being that as we start to mature standards, we want to show that the operator, the implementer's interpretation of the standard is the same. So you and I could implement the same standard and we have maybe a different understanding as what was meant by it. And if we do that, then we will have an interoperability failure uh, in the field. So the purpose is to get the implementers together, to bring their early products, to put them into a closed room uh, under a non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> so it's, it's all very, you know, there's, there's, there, there, what, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, right. if you like. Um, so they then interconnect their products to make sure that they do interoperate. And many times we find that they don't interoperate because they've interpreted the standard in, in a slightly different way. If they do, then it's indicative that the standard itself is, is flawed. I mean, we have to correct that ambiguity because if two intelligent people <laughs> interpret it in a different way, then clearly we haven't written it clearly enough. Right. So yeah. the, the purpose of the plug test is not to, to demonstrate how clever people are. It's really to provide that feedback loop into standardization to show where, the, where ambiguities have, have maybe been introduced and, and, and we have this difference of understanding. Now in the context of NFV, we've, we've used this tool on several occasions to show, first of all, to prove the concept that, that what we were working on was valid, and then to show that the early standards we had written were being interpreted in the same, same way, and then to build confidence, confidence around the interoperability of different vendors' uh, implementations. In terms of hackathons, that's a slightly different approach. Uh, with hackathons, we're really trying to embrace the developer community because with NFE, for example, it, and, and certainly with MEC, um, it, it's the implement, implementers that we're trying to get to, it's the developers. Mm -hmm. um, so developers and standardizers don't normally have a loving relationship. <laughs> so what we're doing with hackathons is, is sort of trying to welcome the um, developers into our club, okay. create an environment where they feel very much at home, 
um, they can take our early standards, we, we put them into a, a developer environment for the week, they can then hack away and they can produce whatever code they want to produce and demonstrate that they too have that same understanding of, of the standard. Uh, as, as was intended. So both tools are complementary, plug tests and hackathons. We've had many years of successful use of them and we find that in the case of NFE and MEC they've been very useful indeed. Okay, and we've talked a bit about the importance of standards. How does that rank as far as uh, challenges that um, service providers are facing for SDN and NFE? I think with, with NFE and SDM we've seen a number of open source uh, activities emerging uh, where people are taking that standard and trying to, to develop code in an open source way and, and, and try and implement that into products, which is fine, but if, if there are many different open source activities, to some extent that creates a level of um, uh, a lack of confidence, if you like, in the market. People think, well, it, you know, if there are so many open source implementations, which one should I go for? Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that there's never been a more important time for standards than right now because whatever open source implementation you wish to look at, you want to know that it's standards compliant because that is the, the route, if you like, to the confidence building that we need uh, for deployment. So uh, from my point of view, I don't think there's ever been a, a time where standards are more important than the time we're in right now. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. Well, thanks so much for your time today, Adrian. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Kelsey. I'm Kelsey Zeiser with Light Reading for Orb TV.